Hi. Now this is the second in my series on sketching graphs of parametric equations where we're just looking at sketching them by considering the behavior of x and y as t varies. Now in this first one here then we've got x equals t squared and y equals 1 over t. So as usual we look at what happens when t is 0. Now when t is 0 x will be 0 here. But when t is 0 in this one, y is undefined because you can't divide by 0. So what happens then? Well the best way we can look at this is to think of what happens when t is just slightly more than 0, a positive small value. Well y will be 1 divided by a small positive value which is going to result in a very huge positive value of y. So we've got a curve starting off up here. As t tends to 0, x tends to 0, and y tends to a huge positive number. And as t gets larger, x gets larger, moving out, staying positive, but y tends to 0 but stays positive. 1 divided by a huge positive number tends to 0. So this graph is going to come down like this and tend towards 0, not touching the x-axis. So this is the branch where t is greater than 0. When t is less than 0, x will be positive still. And for small values of t close to 0, x will be close to 0. y however will be negative. A small value of t that is negative is going to result in a huge negative value for y. So we're going to have something down here. And as we take on board larger negative numbers, x is going to become more positive, y is going to become smaller. For large negative values, y is going to tend to 0 but be just less than 0, negative. And there's going to be symmetry about the x-axis. So our graph is going to come in like this. And this is the branch where t is less than 0. OK, let's have a look at this number 2. x equals t squared plus 1, y equals t plus 1. When t is naught, x is 1 and y is 1. So we've got a point up here, say. This is the point 1, 1. Let's just mark that in as 1, 1. And that occurs when t equals naught. Now what happens as we now increase t, take on board positive values? Well x remains positive and greater than 1. So we're going to move out in this direction. And what happens to y as we take on positive values? Well the y values are going to be greater than 1. So it's going to rise. But do you notice that x involves the t squared whereas y involves just t? So it's going to move out in this direction faster than it rises. So we've got a curve looking something like this when that happens. Now what happens when we take values of t less than 0? Well, when we take negative values, t squared is positive. We add it to 1, so we're going to move it away from the 1 here, it towards the right. And we're going to move at exactly the same rate as we did for the equivalent positive values of t. And when it comes to y, at first, y remains positive for some negative values of t, but as we take on board bigger negative values of t, y becomes more negative. And there's symmetry about this line 
running through y equals 1. There's symmetry about y equals 1. So we're going to have the curve looking like this. And this is the branch for t less than 0. And if we're asked to find this point where it crosses the x-axis, this would be where y is 0. And when y is 0, t would have to be minus 1. Put it in here, minus 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2. So this point here is at x equals 2. And it occurs when t equals minus 1. With number 3, we've got x equals t minus 3, y equals t cubed. What's that one going to look like? Well, when t is naught, x is minus 3, and y is naught. So we're going to be out here at minus 3. Let's put some values of t greater than 0 in here. Now, when t is greater than 0, we're going to have x greater than minus 3. So we're going to move out in this direction. And what's going to happen to y? Well, y is going to go positive. And it's going to rise at a greater rate than what we move out to the right at. So we're going to have a curve that's going to go shooting up like this. And what happens now when we look at the branch for t less than 0? Well, if we put negative values in here for t, x is going to be negative. And y is also going to be negative. It's going to have opposite values to the equivalent positive t values that we put in. So like when t was 2, we got y was 8. But if we put t is minus 2 in, we get minus 8. So this graph is going to come down here and then carry on out like this. And this is the branch where t is less than 0. Now for equation 4, we've got x equals t squared plus 1, y equals t cubed. So put t is naught in. We get x is 1, y is naught, so we've got 1 naught here. And then, when t is greater than 0, what happens to x? It remains positive, greater than 1. So we're going to move out in this direction. y increases, it remains positive, increases at a faster rate than x, so we're going to go zooming up like this. This is the branch t is greater than 0. Put t is negative in here, negative values of t, what do we get? Well, t stays positive and we're adding 1, so we're going to always go out from the 1 to the right. But y will be negative, and it will duplicate the same y values, though, that you had up here, only negative. So we've got a reflection in the x-axis, so our graph looks something like this. And this is the branch where t is less than 0. OK, well I hope that's given you some idea of how to sketch parametric equations just by taking t is 0 and then looking at the behaviour of x and y as we take the positive values of t and the negative values of t. OK, so good luck with any sketches that you happen to be asked to do.